Welcome to the Builders Podcast, episode 104. We've built the agency, defined the vertical, now marketing and sales. What we're doing. Before we jump into this episode, please subscribe to this podcast, hit that notification bell if you're on YouTube, and after a listen, please give us a thumbs up, like, and share if we've earned it. With your help, we can reach more people and deliver these valuable from the trenches lessons to those that need it. Enjoy the episode. Welcome to another of the builders. Today I'm going to talk about things related to kind of expanding on the last episode, solo episode where I talked about what we're doing, except this time I'm just going to talk about the concepts behind what we're doing, sort of, and what that evolution has been and how we got here with our new vertical uh, that we're tackling. And what we're going to get kind of a little bit more detail on what we're going to do there. Uh, it's interesting because uh, to kind of get recap here, we're going after a new vertical. It's no secret. Uh, I've been talking about it for a while. Uh, it's an insurance niche. Um, targeting insurance agencies, agents uh, more specifically, right? And uh, in the realm of selling them web design and development, um, actually helping them build websites. So that is that is the goal. And the reason, as I've talked about before, is because I used to be an insurance agent. I was in sales. I spent 10 years doing a wide range of, I've sold just about everything. In that time frame, everything from personal personal lines insurance to commercial lines insurance to life health. Wow, I tried everything back then. <laughs> so these are my people, sort of. <laughs> and I, I know the I know the domain, I know the market, I know um, what's important to insurance agents, all that good stuff. That's why I decided now that after ten plus years um, in web development design going in the fifth year uh, with a web design agency, uh, that maybe I'm well positioned to define that as a, as a good vertical to go off after next. And I actually am very, very hopeful with this. I think we're, like I said, we're very well positioned. And that's a little bit what I want to talk about first here. It's this just didn't happen. I think I recently talked about in a recent video as well, I, that everything we do is strategic. Right. And the decisions I make and where I move, the direction I move towards has been thought out. Or we've been building things to a point where we can now tackle something new. And that's exactly what we're doing here. We have spent the last four years figuring out who we are and what we do whether that's what we do in the realm of WordPress or other things we're doing. We're actually in the middle of planning a potential Laravel <laughs> PHP framework um, uh, project. Uh, we do other things, uh, other use other frameworks. But, you know, most of what we do is WordPress. But we we are at, at the heart of what we do. We're, we're WordPress. And then figuring out, you know, having our own products and developing that side of, of things, creating our own framework to build websites for clients. All that's been happening for the last several years. You know, I started building a team over two years ago. And um, today, I, you know, we have seven people plus. Sometimes we float people in and out, um, depending on the needs. And that's probably growing. So, yeah. And <laughs> we've been doing awesome, right? So I got to develop that team, um, and and they've been learning how we do things. We've built uh, using our framework to build. You know, we kind of embraced a year ago. We started this process of embracing full site editing in WordPress, and how you build custom themes using that framework. Uh, it's you know, it's one thing to okay, you can go out and get a full site editing theme that's in the mark WordPress marketplace or whatever. But how do you how do you create your own framework out of that? And how can you provide services and a great website and experience to clients? 
But uh, up until now, it's been kind of we've gotten what we've gotten. We certainly we have our vertical for a long time is really one of them has been defined as, you know, going and in, in partnering with other agencies, whether it's digital marketing agencies or other web, de, you know, other, other web shops, uh, web design development, whatever, and partnering with them and helping them in some aspect of what they do. And maintenance is kind of a, a little bit, uh, that's more of a, a, a horizontal, you know, it doesn't, we do maintenance for any type of WordPress site and e-commerce, you know, e-commerce or membership areas or, or whatever, or just, you know, some of them is a little small contracts, some are larger. So we do a lot there. So it's really been about maintenance and the, and agencies and, um, for the last couple of years, but that has prepared us for this moment. We've worked out our, on our processes, what we use for documentation, how we manage projects, how we can position ourselves to be more, you know, to scale up. Uh, worked a lot on, you know, I've talked a lot about how we've worked on uh, project or project management processes, um, getting help in that department and uh, how we structured, what tools we use and all that stuff and how we simplified things and how our communications all flow now and we tr keep track of everything, even though we have clients and, and partners in various different project management systems or using different emails. And so we've wrangled all that, though. We've figured it all out. Uh, we're in a – it's not – nothing's ever perfect, right? There's sometimes there's little corners, little um, things that happen or that are happening that you – you know, it's not perfect, but you're always trying to figure out ways to improve those things. And yeah, we've just kind of figured all that out, right? The team itself has developed and they've been working together, which is really, really important. See, in the beginning, you know, I'd I, when I started hiring, uh, especially that first year, everyone was kind of in their little silos, you know. Um, but one of the things I always try to do is try to find ways for them to work together. And sometimes it's a little harder, uh, depending on, you know, if they're dedicated to one client or something like that. But any opportunity I have to, for, for them to work together, also to communicate together, right? We have Slack and it's kind of like a community. And uh, we think of everybody as, as part of the same family and team. So that's something that's been developing as well. So what I really want to have is a really solid foundation that we can build on. And I think we have that foundation. And I think I was thinking about it earlier today as I was thinking about the topic for, for this episode. Yeah, that's, I don't think too far ahead. <laughs> Sometimes it's when I turn this on, I know what I'm talking about. Uh, but uh, we were definitely not scripted. Um, but no, I was just thinking like, I kind of lost my train of thought. See, that's what happens. See, now this is what happens. Oh, I remember. I had to pause for a second. Jeez, don't let me get off topic like that. Uh, I have no one. I have no one here to go to. What was I talking about? <laughs> but no, I think it's interesting because we do such a variety of things. I think it's really it is it is very challenging to kind of be the. Uh, be all end all for our clients and our agencies, right? Agency partners, because we don't know what's going to come, what what they're going to have an issue with, and sometimes it's random, sometimes it's outside of the normal scope, and we do it anyway. Uh, but we're very scrappy that way. We can we can with maintenance, anything's possible. You know, there's no there's no cadence, there's no structure to what we do on a day to day basis or week to week basis. And that's what, there's a lot of agencies that need that structure. We work with some. Right, they have a very specific vertical they go after, or very specific process and thing they do for their clients, and they've turned that into a system that's repeat repeatable. Right, uh, they built teams around that particular thing. We haven't done that from the perspective of we don't have that cadence. We don't have when I first started um, Donna, who's my project manager. She helps me with uh, a couple accounts and uh, getting some stuff done and then assigning stuff and managing things. 
When she first came here, we talked a lot about Scrum. Now, she came from an agency where they had larger projects that were more structured. They had actual sprints, if you know anything about agile project management. They had time frames. They would have everything's planned out and these iterations on it. That existed. When she came here, it took her a while to really uh, accept or understand what was happening because we're not like that right now. We have the occasional project. We Don't get me wrong. We do have larger, longer-term projects in there, but some of the things she's helping with particularly or um, that happen within that is very random. And, you know, and some things are like there might be a fire, something's needed tomorrow, some things are needed yesterday. Uh, so it's it's kind of crazy. It's it's very, it's a little messy. And like I said, we, we had to build, I had to kind of build a, uh, team, including myself, where I could be scrappy. I don't know if that's the right way to describe us, but scrappy in that we can just, you know, we just knock things out, little things. You know, uh, I was working this morning. I was uh, helping. We just did this random PDF design uh, for it, uh, a giveaway for a list. Somebody has a list and, that, and then as an incentive, they're providing a report or an ebook, whatever you want to call it. It's short. Um, we, uh, not we, <laughs> my designer designed uh, the, a cover for that and, and uh, uh, styled uh, the content better and, and uh, worked on typography and stuff, whatever. But this morning, like, uh, we're trying to get that launched. She's not around. I am, uh, and I'm getting messages um, that they needed some tweaks to that document. It was related to some links that were in there. And um, and then there was, uh, they needed like a some, re they had some links in there they don't have pages yet for, so they wanted to create temporary redirects. So I did that. So I jumped in to, to the website, you know, SFTP in there and, Add the redirects and updated the open my Adobe dot my Adobe Pro and uh, Acrobat Pro and edited the document for them, fix those links and delivered that back. That's scrappy, man. That was not planned. That was on the fly. <laughs> those are the type of things that are happening. I mean, we don't we do obviously. I every day I'm assigning things to my team. They don't need to do things immediately. They're, they are scheduled to a degree, but it's 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 messy. But I think because of that and because we're able to react so quickly and we still are very agile, and that's what I feel like we don't have to, when you send us something, um, we, may, we may ask to schedule it, but if it's a priority, we can usually jump on it pretty quick um, within reason <laughs> if there's nothing else on fire. But... But we're scrappy like that. We can we can really, uh, you know, do all this stuff. We've got stuff coming at us from all these different angles. I think that's an excellent foundation. And I think, as I was thinking this morning, now that I have my train of thought back, uh, that that that's always going to have it's always going to have be valuable to have that team because in my mind, that's a team. I think it's going to be important. Uh, especially still doing the maintenance, that's not going away. We're still going to do the same stuff we're doing uh, as I get into what we're doing next. But we're still going to have that kind of team where they're able to do those little challenging, smaller off, quicker, you know, uh, random things. I think having that as a foundation is, is really, really great because even if we start doing more structured stuff, that those, those people – are going to be the people that can come in and quickly fix something or, you know, or come in for a specific reason to uh, handle something. Um, so I think there's good, going to be good flow there uh, and, and will allow us to be more agile over time. So I think that's a good foundation to the team. Now, where am I headed with this? <laughs> so as I was just talking about, like there's other agencies out there that are more structured and it's because they've identified a, vis a specific vertical market, whatever you want to call it, and they've built a framework, a process 
to go out and get those people, to find those people, to build whatever they're building or market or, you know, do whatever marketing they're doing, whatever service they're doing for them, right? They have it all structured. This is how you do it. And it's very predictable. And uh, and I know, because I like I said, I work with agencies like that, where if they get a scrappy project or a larger project that doesn't really fit within their framework, they freak out. And that's where Matt's agency comes in. <laughs> that's why we partner, because we can take those things off their plate um, and help them absorb those type of things. But so it's, it's, there's, it's possible to manage those things. But what we're doing now um, in my agency with that foundation now I am starting to build, like I said, we do those things. We still do full design development projects. In fact, we've got a couple going right now. Um, but that's going to become more of a thing. Because now that I have this foundation, now that we've been preparing, we've built the team, we've gone through enough battles with clients and projects and stuff where we've kind of, we have bonded and we know how to overcome and how to deal with things. And now that we have that foundation, we're ready to identify that market that we're going to go after and do something more structured. Um, I already mentioned that it's the insurance niche going after insurance agencies. Well, now we can... When you do that, we can create a good system. We're going to use the same framework. So this, again, this is another one of the things we've been preparing for. We built a framework we can now use to go out and market and build websites for this particular vertical, this particular niche, right? And we can build them because we already have the framework. We know what we're doing. We know how to sell that framework. We know how to build that framework. I have multiple developers that are good at it, so we're ready to rock and roll. And we'll build a team, we'll grow that team that works with that framework. And then um, that will also allows us, so when you're working with a singular, uh, it, it could be anything. It could be contractors, it could be lawyers, attorneys, it could be doctors. I don't know if doctors works. Uh, it could be animal, you know, like, like, dog stores or, you know, pet stores, <laughs> be dog stores. Uh, it could be any, any kind of niche like that. They have, each of those niches has their own needs or their own style to build things. So it's from the design and how you design things, but also the elements within the site. Not every business has teams, so you don't always need a team page, but with insurance, you may. Uh, and a very specific kind of team page and how that's designed and what uh, information you have to have there. You learn that stuff working with in those more narrow frameworks, right? So also, you know, like, especially when you get into insurance or financial industry or whatever, there's going to be even, there's going to be specific integrations with maybe other APIs or things they're doing. So you learn, you're able to learn and get better at those things and anticipate those things. Right now with my agency and with the partners I have, so I, there's certain, like some of our agencies are more narrow in what they get. So we are good at, you know, getting better at those niches, uh, but it's still random. So it's unpredictable. So we have to do a lot of uh, R&D <laughs> sometimes like what are they talking about what do they need or how do you do that you know so that has to kind of be built into the cost because we're, we're learning that stuff on the fly which is good because again it makes us more experienced and more scrappy because I you know I, it's important to me within my agency because of that because of the type of work we do and, and random integrations we have to do we have to be good at the research side of it too and figuring those things out you can't know everything. Not every web developer knows everything. It's impossible. Even if you're just JavaScript, it's hard to know everything because there's so much there. There's so many different frameworks and things you can do. So you don't know what to expect. You have to be really, really good at figuring that stuff out. But the more narrow we get, 
the fewer of those question marks we're going to have, or we're going to have done that. We can have it solved already. So, or, you know, when they, sometimes when a client comes to us and they ask us to recommend, have you, do you know of a plugin that does this or this and that? We, we can oftentimes recommend those things. There's go-to plugins that we use all the time. Tell me what you need. You know, you need a form plugin. I can tell you which one. You need an SEO plugin, tell you which one. You need a, a cache plugin, I can tell you which one. So those things we figured out. But if it's more specific to a particular niche or whatever, that can happen too. So that's one of the reasons that we want to start uh, looking at insurance. We, we can also maybe charge a little bit more because we are more specialized. That's part of this too. You know, it's a, you know, it could be more lucrative for us because we become the go-to people to build this particular type of site. And we have, they, people want pay for that experience. Right. Um, yeah. So all the stuff that, if you're a business person, you might know already <laughs> and be like, yeah, duh. <laughs> Why well, haven't been doing that since the beginning? But I, the thing is that I hadn't, uh, it's not that I've never thought about niches. I, I used to be a niche marketer. I called myself a niche marketer over a decade ago. So I know about that. I know the benefits of that in, in a, a variety of different scenarios. And I technically, that's why when I started focusing on agencies and started focusing on different things that I, I started to narrow, but this is a, a whole new ball game. And uh, there's also another huge, huge, huge benefit here. And that's what we'll get into next. So the other big benefit is that we can get better at our marketing. So we've gotten better at building stuff and being scrappy and and uh, being able to do a variety of different projects and creating a, we got a great team that can do a lot of different things, great partners. But also, there's the marketing and sales aspect of this. When you have, and I've talked about this. We had a, I don't remember what his name was. We had a, a guest on this podcast quite a while ago. It was probably, it might even been a year ago. Who knows? Um, and I remember us having this conversation, how it was really challenging for them because they're, they weren't narrow enough. They didn't know who to market to. And, and their industry was very competitive. So it was super difficult. So they were trying to build some niche products to, to uh, be able to improve how they market and say, sell things. You know, they, they could actually define it and go after that market. That's exactly what I'm doing with insurance. I, I'm able to define, I'm able to see. And, that, and that's, again, it's, it's a good reason for me to have experience in that market because this isn't an abstract idea for me. I spent a decade of my life mingling with other agents, working in a variety of different agencies and different uh, partnerships and um, dealing with people, you know, within, you know, like the companies, you know, insurance companies and stuff from underwriters to whatever. I understand the space. So I don't have to, I don't have to make it up in my head. Like when I think insurance agency, I see all the components of that. That's huge when I'm going to go out now and talk to the people. So now I've not only have we prepared for for all of this to build stuff and help insurance agencies, but we also you know have somebody at the helm that understands it, right? Now I don't know how I scale that because obviously I'm not going to be I can't be the only one that sells <laughs> to this market forever. But maybe there's a web developer out there who used to be an insurance agent. So I'll look for that person. If you're that person, give me a call. No. Um, so that is that is number one. That's huge. So uh, I'm able to create the messaging and understand that market, you know, right off the bat. But it also helps me, of course, as I was talking about, it helps us narrow and focus and go after that particular market, that particular vertical. I call it vertical in terms we're going to go, we're kind of soft launching into this, right? So we are going to start building websites for insurance agencies, but that may not be all we do. So stay tuned. 
In 2024, I will be talking about other things we're doing for insurance agencies. But that's how about that it does narrow that focus though. That's my that's my doorway into this market. And I'm able to now if I was gonna do pay-per-click or if I was gonna do SEO or if I was gonna do any other type of marketing like that, it would be easier to target those people, not cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> I, am, I am not naive enough to know to think that uh, this is a, a cheap market to target, but but we're going to get into that for a second because in a second because um, I've had some aha moments. Is so going into twenty twenty three, it had been my whole thing that we are done building, even though I'm still finishing up the website this week. <laughs> Well, we we had a design and we had mostly built, but now I'm like tweaking it. Uh, we're done building now, and now I'm thinking strategy and around and the, the overall strategy and what we're going to do for marketing. And I'm starting to implement some things. I just got done talking probably in my last podcast about you know how we're going to do some direct email. And the exciting thing is that. That is evolving in my head. And I'm starting to have conversation now that I'm thinking about it. So there's a lot of things that, you know, you see off in a distance, you kind of have a foggy idea of, of where you're headed and what you might do. But as I have more and more conversations and I do more research and come generate more ideas around what we're going to do and get some things going, I certain things are highlighted that could be really, really good. So we are going to be doing direct email. I thought about, well, this this actually sheds uh, some efforts off of Unified Toolkit a bit, is I really, one of the two things I was gonna do, I was gonna, we got two initiatives. We have Unified Toolkit, which is our WordPress framework to build websites in, using blocks in a nutshell. <laughs> in-house custom framework. If you get a website built by us, we're probably using it. Um, but I was going to do some additional marketing for that and test paid traffic. But I think that's on hold because um, I've identified something where I want to invest more into it because I see it clearly. I've had some very aha moments in the last couple of days. Uh, I had a demo done for me and I, I don't like, I don't like really talking about stuff or recommending anything. Cause if I, if I talk about it here, I'm kind of recommending it in a way. <laughs> um, Cause I have, I don't have experience with it yet. You know, right? this is just a, I'll give you an idea what it is, but it's a solution to, uh, to help you zero in on qualified leads. And I had a conversation uh, yesterday that I wouldn't say blew my mind, but it like opened my mind to the possibilities. And I realized I need to do this. I need to try to do this. I need to test this over the next six months to a year. We need to test this system and framework to get leads and to close sales. It's very promising. It's not really cheap. But it's very promising. Um, it's not cheap, but it's it wouldn't take me many sales to pay for it. That, that that's always a good thing, right? Something can be can on the surface look expensive, whether it's a monthly cost or a yearly cost or whatever. But then, if you think about it in the context of a sale, you should be able to clearly say that paid for it. If I get one sale a month, it clearly pays for it. Maybe even one sale every couple months in this case. So that's not a bad thing. Uh, I thought, you know, I think about that the same way with, uh, especially back in the day when I used to do a lot of email marketing uh, and had other digital products. And I was an internet marketing guy, affiliate marketing, all this stuff. But I had, um, I had my own list, I had my own products and, 
Uh, I remember trying to justify the cost of, uh, back then I used a Weber mostly, I think. Um, but there's a monthly cost to that. Right. And I thought, gosh, you know, yeah, you know, I didn't have a lot of budget back then. <laughs> we're talking like 15 years. My goodness. Yeah. We're talking probably like 18 years ago. But no. <laughs> oh my God. I'm feeling a little old. Um, but no, but I'm still spry and young inside. Um, but back then, uh, I would ju justify whatever it was, like $60 a month, probably wasn't really that much. But it's like, if all I need is one sale, like if I build a list and I could send out that list once a month and make one sale, one commission back then, whatever it was that I was doing, it paid for it. And I did it. I and that's exactly what happened. In fact, many thousands more than that because I was doing affiliate marketing and um, I, back then I promoted a lot of software and stuff. But anyway, so it definitely paid for it. I think the same way with this, if I'm gonna look at a marketing solution or get help with marketing or I'm gonna hire somebody or hire an outside agency or somebody's gonna do something for me, I have to look at it from the perspective of revenue. I have to be feel confident that I can sell what I'm selling, right? So if the goal is, and which it is with direct email, no matter what kind of path you take here and how you approach it, um, not talking about the mechanics of it, I'm talking about just in, in general. Um, if I can look at all that and I, I can say this, uh, I only, I can, all I have to do is close one, two, three sales, but I have to be confident in that I can do that, right? I'm, I'm confident in my sales abilities. I know that, so th their job is to get with direct email, is to get people in front of me, no matter who's doing it. Get people in front of Matt. I'm the sales department right now, so. <laughs> but eventually, if all goes well, I might have one or a couple of people helping me sell. Uh, but that, so as long as, so the whole goal, so I don't wanna worry about the process. I want to sit back and I want to see things showing up on my calendar. And I have. So it'll be, I'll get up in the morning, say, oh, I got a two o'clock appointment with Joe Smith. I have no idea who Joe Smith is. I look at the note. Oh, somebody interested in insurance websites. <laughs> then I get on that call and I should be able to close that call because I know my domain. I know how to talk to an insurance agent. I know what their needs are. I listen to what their needs are, what their pain points are, all that good stuff. And then I come back with the solution. So this is what we can do for you. But that, you have to be confident in that, right? I'm not, you can't throw money at something and not have your message figured out, your messaging figured out. You know, you can't, you can't, you have to have some confidence that you can close the sale. So, cause that's not, it's not all just like, you know, everything we do in our websites, you can't just have, you just can't have a website and, and focus on traffic. What do you do when you get that traffic? You have to be able to close that traffic, right? Whether it's uh, selling something directly on your website, or if you're in services or some situation like mine, where you have to talk to somebody, you know, I, I don't sell websites by somebody who just goes to my website and checks out. That's not how it works. <laughs> they have to have, we have to have an intro call or a consultation. And then we talk about what their needs are. And then we figure out a good package for them. And then we sell, you know, sell that, but that all has to be in place. So that's what direct email is doing. Direct email is a mechanism to get people in front of Matt. But what's important also is that the people that I'm talking to are as qualified as possible. I don't want to have to show up on a call or, on, you know, on a, a meeting and I'm talking to somebody that is way out of line with what we offer. It has to be as zeroed in on our market as possible. And that might take some time. It may take some testing um, and refining until I get that. But if we figure that out, then it's just a machine. Then we can just scale. We just increase the numbers. The thing about this type of thing is that it's a numbers game. So if you figure out how to, if you can figure out your numbers, how many people you need uh, to contact, to reply to you, 
to talk to you and get an, an appointment and how many of those you close. If you can figure that out and you systemize it and script it, then you can repeat it and scale that up. I did that insurance. I did that in insurance. Uh, I did that there and I, and that works. That, that can be applied to I've applied that numerous times over the years. I first learned that specifically in, uh, at least it was driven home to me the most in, in the life insurance realm where it was lead based. I would get a packet of leads every week, qualified leads, hot leads, because they were probably, I think there were, it was a really short time frame. Like they were just, the leads were just sent in and sent to me within like a week. I'd get those hot leads and I would call those prospects. We have a specific script that was a tested and refined script to close on the sales call to go to their web, their, to go to their website, to their, their home and sit across the kitchen table. And then I would have another whole presentation for them. To, you know, to talk about the insurance we were selling them and to close that sale. That whole thing was mapped out and the numbers worked. Numbers may not work at first when you're doing something new, but with if you just iterate on it, and you figure out what works and you're testing and you're split testing and you're doing all that stuff, you will improve those numbers. And then once you get to that, like I said, when you get to that point where you got a, a repeatable system, then you can scale it up. That's why so one of the, the kind of the aha moments I had here was I was having these conversations the last couple of days and and um, I uh, it just kind of dawned on me. You know, I think about doing, you know, pay-per-click and I think about SEO and I think about even the social media we do or the other ways we kind of try to market and brand ourselves and all that stuff. Because I was having a conversation yesterday specifically uh, with a gentleman and uh, it just at some moment I was like oh my gosh I get this like I understand it I see it clearly <laughs> this is like even even the almost two years ago now that we did some direct email back then it was semi-successful like we were starting to see results uh, we pause for reasons, but I realize it just dawned on me. I'm like, this is the game I know. This is like, I just, I just like, this makes complete sense to me. I totally understand the system of, of generating leads. And so I was talking to this person and they were, they were pitching me basically on how this would work and how they could help us. And I'm like, I get it. I get it. And that's that if you could if you can figure that out, there's some there's some really uh great potential there because now I see it all. Like I had like I said, it was fuzzy in the distance, like something we're working towards. Let's build it and then we'll figure out how we're gonna market it and do the sales. That's I understand that. I'm still tying up the messaging this week with the website and kind of tying up some loose ends. But now I realize, oh, this is what we need to do because I understand the numbers. I understand how this is going to work. And I've tested it a little bit. I understand that, yes, what you're telling me is correct because we've tested this already. And this just scales that up a little and improves on it. I'm just, I'm so stoked. And it is an investment. It's a little bit of an investment here, but I think that the investment is going to be, a, oh gosh, so worth it. So worth it. Um, but, you know, time will tell. That is why I'm not going to tell you what, exactly what I'm doing. Because I, I like to I like to talk about things after the fact. I will tell you if it failed as well, right? Six months from now, seven, eight months from now, whenever we uh, have some experience under our belts, um, I will be able to tell you... Um, you know, we'll cut a little bit more in detail about it, maybe even tell you who it is, you know, who's helping me. Um, but uh, and, and, or you may get a hint of how it's doing by what I talk about in the next six months as well. 
If I'm talking about how crazy we are and how awesome we're doing in insurance, there's probably a foundational reason why, and it might tie back to our marketing and sales. But, um, but yeah, the, the lessons there too with the uh, with life insurance and and how I've applied that over the years, and I'll apply it here. It really, it's no joke. It is a numbers game. It is a hundred percent in the numbers game. And, but to get to that numbers game, you do need to find a good system. It can't be applied to everything or anything. You have to have a good system. I already am confident that I can sell um, because I've, this is what I've been doing for the last couple of years. You know, I, what, one of my roles in my agency and the reason why we have work is because I sold that work, right? <laughs> That's kind of, kind of makes sense, right? I'm pretty good at selling. Pretty good. I may not be a master, but I'm pretty good. Um, but uh, but if that if this if this works, it's going to be it's going to be amazing. And I think it's going to add. And going back to my original conversation around having a scrappy and uh, really really good foundational team, I think it'll be easy to build on top of that. Um, we have the we've got things. If we can. If we can uh, manage chaos, if we start doing things that are more structured, um, we we should be able to do really really well. It's it's different though, it's different, um, but good. So that is that is the that is the latest on that. I think um, the fact that uh, we've been on this journey and. Um, it's been a great journey. We've been growing. You know, we grew last two years. We, you know, well, since the beginning, every year we grow a little bit more. Um, not even a little bit more. Pretty good pace. This should skyrocket us. Um, it's it is actually there was one. So there, the two things I wanted to say. You know, first of all, we were talking about this in comparison to pay per click and stuff. Pay per click, you have to spend, especially if you're in a very competitive market or you don't have things defined as well it, it you can spend a lot of money quickly and not get results i mean or get you know, so 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 results and sometimes it's not uh, replicable and there's a lot there's a lot more moving parts in that that's why I like with this system i think that uh it's a lot more defined and works with numbers a little bit more i'd rather invest in this right now um, we may still may do pay-per-click and we may still promote unified toolkit, but right now I'm thinking I'm going to zero in more on all of this. And, and then we'll, you know, we'll see the, the other thing here is I hesitate a little bit. I, I'm not pulling the trigger on this new thing. Um, I got to wait a minute. Um, I might even still change my mind, by the way. <laughs> That's how I am, right? <laughs> but something may come to light. I'm like, I don't know if we should do that right now. Or a new client comes along and be like, maybe we should just hold off. But the other thing is we have to, with that structure, and we have this great team, we also have to be able to scale and handle more business. That's a little bit trickier because if this one is a little bit, not like a fire hose, but it would be putting a lot of qualified leads in front of me to talk to every month, uh, kind of controllable as to, because it's, again, it's a numbers game, right? But but even the base level, there's going to be people in front, I'm going to be in front of people. Even if I sold like a couple more a month, now I have to have people to do that. The, the fact of the matter is, yes, I built this team, but we're very busy. <laughs> you know, so... We have to, we probably would have to add to that team or add another person or move somebody, you know, move some things around. So we have to be able to actually absorb that. It also adds some additional things because this is going to actually be uh, a fuller process, a more defined process, probably a larger process than um, what we've ever done. So there's other things involved there, but, but yeah, wish us luck. <laughs> You got to you got to take action if you're going to, you know, uh, build it. So I don't, you know, like I think uh, I think a lot of I'm just I think a lot about this. I'm very excited. I'm very I'm very happy with our team. I'm very happy that 
somebody talked me into going after insurance. Uh, I just, I, there's something about it. I, it feels right. It makes a lot of sense. And it doesn't, th- this does not mean at all that we're changing what we've already got. We may freeze it though. Um, I have thought about it a lot, actually, even in the last year, there's certain, we get a client and I'm like, okay, maybe we should just chill for a minute. We don't need to be doing, we do baseline marketing and content and we could scale that up, but I don't because I, I like the pace we're at. And I talk about controlling growth and all that I have in previous videos. And this is something that could turn that, you know, just really explode. I, I just, I just have that feeling, <laughs> but I want to, I just want to be careful with that. And, um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's something that looking back, um, you know, with, with these other agencies and stuff, it's, uh, it, it just, I wanted to create a boutique agency. I have never, you know, but that's also, it can be boutique in that and what we do. So like from an agency perspective, we work with a good number of agencies that send us regular work that some of it's just monthly. It's just, you know, how much can you handle, Matt? And they send me, <laughs> send me what they what they got. Um, so it's, it's madhouse in terms of that, right? So, but agencies, agencies are actually uh, a little bit more, um, how I want to say this, um, not demanding, but they, they, they demand a, a different kind of attention. You know, there's, you have to really be there for them because it's their business, their clients, um, and you may, they may scale up, you know, too. <laughs> we may scale up what they're, I mean, I've had agencies where we've become partners, we start real small and then we scale up. We just le- actually um, went, started a relationship with a new agency this month. Now I really gotta say, wait, um, <laughs> but we just, I was celebrating uh, in Slack, I'm like, good job, because we, it's really critical when you first start a relationship that you not impress them first, you know, first impressions, that first little, whether it's a little project or a large project, you have to win. You have to, you have to deliver, because that sets the pace, right? Every project, every successful project that you have with an agency, then if you have some hiccups, it's okay. Like They can forgive you because you've proven yourself, right? Things are going to happen, but that first project—that's always I'm always the most nervous with that first project. And we delivered one this morning. And this particular agency, there's other projects I know about already, and uh, I think we'll be doing a lot with them. But there's another one, right? That's on top of what we're already doing for other agencies and direct clients. So adding this whole insurance thing is—it's—it's. <laughs> it's, Okay, Matt, be careful. I got to be careful. I know I can sell. I know I can, I I have very good feeling about this lead system or this uh, system to generate leads. I feel really good about that, but I don't want to turn it on too much, right? And I got to be ready. I I know that I can add to the team to handle it, but it's got to be done right. So the next couple months can be interesting. Well, anyway, uh, thanks for listening to me today and uh, talking about this stuff. This this stuff really excites me. I, I love talking from the trenches. Um, I think um, there's a lot of there's a lot of content out there and people that talk about things from the expert chair um, where they learn those things. It could, could potentially be real world. Uh, of course, it could have been something somebody taught them. You know, uh, there's a lot of that out there. There's experts that are only experts because they read somebody's book. (laughs) What I try to do here is I try to talk from the trenches and talk about things I'm doing, not because I'm trying to brag or I'm trying to um, impress people or whatever. This is how I like to teach. I've I've always taught this way, even back in the day when I was doing pay-per-click advertising, affiliate marketing, the way I would teach those things, because I also taught it, um, 
was showing people how I was launching a campaign or doing keyword research or building an ad, you know, uh, writing ads. Um, I would show people that or I'd share my systems and how I did those things. All right. Thanks for listening in. That's all for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed that. Again, please subscribe if you haven't already and give us a thumbs up if we deserve it. If you want to comment on this episode's page, provide me with requests on topics for future episodes or inquire about being a guest, please find your way to thebuilders.fm. You can contact me there or add a comment under these show notes. Now a word from our sponsor, my agency, Unified Web Design. We build custom websites, features, we maintain websites, we work with agencies to fulfill their web design and development needs, and more. If you are interested in our services or are looking for an agency to work with as a partner to build awesome sites for your clients, feel free to reach out to me at unifiedwebdesign.com. There's a handy contact me link at the top, fill out that form and it will open a ticket and that ticket will find its way to me. Thanks for joining me today. We'll see you next time.